Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. As you know, training camp has started. Day three has been completed today. And unfortunately for the Saints, it's been kind of a, a, a common theme throughout the years, man. The injury bug has seemed to find its way back into our camp. Now, it doesn't seem too serious on one front, and then on the other front, it's very serious. So obviously, um, if you haven't heard, you can hear now. Trey Turner, we just brought in a uh, veteran guard, four-time pro bowler. Out for the season with a quadriceps injury. Now, I even saw a tweet earlier today was saying, you know, everybody that had people, you know, knocked down and carted off all got bad good news. Remember Jalen Ramsey? It was just a meniscus, so he's going to actually play this year. Joe Burrow went down. It was only a calf strain for him. Trey Turner went down. And unfortunately, he's out for the season. All those other guys are probably going to be back sometime this season. That's just been the Saints' luck with these injuries. We just haven't gotten lucky on the injury front. And I know a lot of people try to blame the training staff and the medical staff. Like, you can't blame them for Trey Turner. He was there for a day. He was there for a day. You can't sit there and blame the, you know, the trainers, the medical staff, the all-season program. You can't blame any of that on the Saints for a guy that's been there for a day. We just have bad voodoo, bad luck around just the team right now with these injuries, man. We just can't catch a break on that front. Uh, then you have Trevor Penning, who obviously had an injury-filled rookie season. Injury-filled, first-round pick, a guy that has nothing but potential. A guy that's been pretty good when he's out there, but it's just been sparingly. He's out there. He was injured, a foot injury. Dennis Allen did come out and say it had nothing to do with that, you know, foot injury of last year. It's kind of a new thing, uh, but they say it's minor. He could have probably practiced today. I don't think he did. Uh, so I'm expecting him to be back at the top of next week. But you just don't want to have a setback. These days are, are going to go by quick. The days are going to go by quick, man. You're basically done with this first week, even though it was a half a week. You're done with this first week. Now, next week, it's already going to be August. Then after that, it's going to be in the middle of August. Then you're going to have a preseason game. You can't really miss that many days, especially for a guy that didn't play last year. guy that barely played last year, you don't want him missing all of these training camp days, a guy that we're going to need him to be a starting left tackle in the NFL. That's one of the like most prized positions in the NFL, other than the quarterback position, probably that left tackle position. And he's a guy fighting for that spot. And if he's going to keep missing time for injuries or whatnot, it's going to be hard for the Saints to really put him out there and throw him out there in that fire if he hasn't gotten the reps at practice, hasn't gotten the reps in the preseason. And things like that. I mean, you're missing valuable reps against a pretty good defensive line with Cam Jordan, some of the rookies out there, um, Carl Granderson and things like that. He needs those reps, those one-on-one -on -one reps, those team reps, those any type of reps he can get, he needs. And him just missing a couple more days here or there, a couple days here or there, it's just not good for his development. Now, other than that, everything I've been seeing outside of camp, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good so far. Um, haven't been a lot of video release and things like that, but from what I've seen and from the reports that's out there, it seems like everything's going good so far, man. I'm seeing good things about Michael Thomas. I'm seeing really good things about Marshawn Lattimore. Apparently, he's locking Michael Thomas up out there. Hey, I'm not out there. I didn't see it. I'm just going by word of mouth, and it wouldn't shock me. You got a guy who barely played football in two or three years against an all-pro corner who I think is going to you know, I put him at my number one on my list of Saints players this year. So, you know, you know what I think he's going to do this year. I think he's going to take that claim as the number one corner in the NFL. So, apparently, hey, he's doing his thing out there. So, that doesn't shock me at all. Apparently, Michael Thomas had a pretty good catch today. Olave's looking good. Rashid Shaheed's looking good. Just got to get on the same page with Derek Carr. Elvin Kamara, man. Every video I see of Elvin Kamara, it looks like it's being sped up. It looks like this dude is fresh. This dude is fast. And, of course, while he's looking like this, while he's going to probably be the, you know, on pace to have his best season ever, you know the, the, the NFL is going to come down and suspend him because that's just the Saints' look. God is looking fresh, rejuvenated, all of these things. Finally, I'm liking what I see from Elvin Kamara in the offseason. Looks like he's really, really locked in. Looks like he's in shape. I mean, he's always been in shape. He's Elvin Kamara. But he's looking very, very good so far. In the sparing videos I have seen, I think Elvin Kamara is looking absolutely fantastic out there. So, that's something to watch, man. That's something to watch. Jamal Williams seems like he shed some weight. That's pretty good. He's still a power back. Now, he's still a big dude. I'm not saying he's got down to, you know, Chris Olave size or even Elvin Kamara size. He's still a big dude, but he has slimmed down, trimmed down. That's going to be good because he's going to kind of have to be more of an every down back, especially if Elvin Kamara gets suspended. You're not just a big bruiser, a guy that's going to come in there and get two to three yards on the goal line and things like that. You're going to have to be an every down back. So, that's good for him. Zanya Williamson, you should take notes on how to slim down from Jamal Williams being in New Orleans. But hey, that's neither here nor there. So, man, I like what I'm saying. And I do have to point out, I have seen a lot, a lot of good things. Now, hey, I'm going to cross my fingers. I'm going to, hey, I don't know. No pads right now. 
no anything, but any glimmer of hope, anything I can kind of gloss on and, and hold on to, I'll do it with this guy. I've been saying a lot of good things about no other than Trevor, not Trevor Penny, I almost said Trevor Penny, Peyton Turner. I mean, they're in the same boat, both injured first round picks that have been on the field. But it, anyway, Peyton Turner, I've been seeing a lot of good things about Peyton Turner. Like I said, it hasn't been any, any pads, nothing like that so far. So, you know, you can't really jump out there, jump out the window and saying he's doing a good job. But I've seen a lot of good tweets about Peyton Turner getting some pressures on a quarterback, getting back there in the backfield, beating some different left tackles out there. So I like to see that. I would rather see that than... You know, not to see anything at all about Peyton Turner. He he went with the ones uh, uh, yesterday. So, hey, man, I'll, I'll read some tweets. I'm pulling up some tweets right now. I'll read some tweets uh, about Peyton Turner that a couple people have posted, man. It's been some really good things coming out on Peyton Turner. So that's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask for, man. So he says he feels great. Uh, John Hendricks, Peyton Turner beating two separate left tackles. That's a good tweet. Ross Jackson, he tweeted, big plays came from Chris Olave with a diving catch defended well by Lante Taylor. A big screen run by Elvin Kamara from Derek Carr. Peyton Turner, Nathan Shepard, Nikki Lalos all had nice plays in the run game. Pressure was a theme again for Turner. That's big. Pressure was a theme again for Turner. If Turner can get pressures on the quarterback, obviously he has the talent, man. We know that. You don't go first round if you don't really have the talent. Other things kind of... You know, jump out there and, and hinder your career. Maybe it's you, work ethic. Maybe it's the injury bug. Maybe it's just the coaching staff. But you're going to have the talent if you're drafted in the first round for the most part. So he has the talent. He has the talent. I always thought he was built a little funny. I'm just going to be honest. Built a little funny, man. He looks in shape now, though. Looks in better shape and probably because he was hurt. You probably can't condition him, you know, get your cardio and do all those things in the weight room like you want to if you're injured all the time. So guess what? He's finally healthy coming into an offseason, and that's all we can ask for. Remember his rookie season? He didn't play into that Panthers game because he was hurt. Obviously, he was hurt last season. So this is year. He's healthy so far. Not going wood right there, man. Not going wood. We need Peyton Turner to be Peyton Turner. I already told you all my dream scenario, and I'm sure the Saints' dream scenario, is to have him as the starting defensive end. You have a first-round pick in year three. You want him to start. And if he keeps getting pressures... He does well against the run game. It would be beautiful sight to see him to start because obviously we missed on Marcus Davenport. We can finally put that to rest that we missed on him. It's okay to say you missed. People miss. It's a draft. It's a draft every year for a reason. You're going to miss. And we missed on Davenport. You don't want to miss on Davenport. Also draft Trey Hendrickson, who you hit on, and then you let him go and then miss on Peyton Turner. That's just bad business. That's just bad for business. You don't want that to happen. So I'm not saying Peyton Turner needs to be an all-pro or a pro bowl guy, but he has to be a respectable defensive end. If you could come in a defensive end, you know, play over 50% of the snaps, play well enough, you know, in the season with, you know, six or seven sacks, that's not asking for much. I'm not asking you to be Nick Bosa, you know, or J.J. Watt or T.J. Watt, I should say, not J.J. I'm not asking you to be that. I'm not even asking you to be Cam Jordan. Just be Peyton Turner. Be the best Peyton Turner you can be. But first three days, no pads. I keep saying no pads. You can't really hit, can't really grab, hold. You can't really do all the things you would do in pads. But... I do like what I'm hearing on Peyton Turner, so man, I'm good. I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see it, man. He was rotating the one with the ones, like I said. Everything I've been saying, man. Peyton Turner's having a good camp so far, so I need him to step up, arise to the occasion, and that'll be great for the Saints. That's all, really, man. Day three of training camp. I hope more video, more things come out, man. Once those pads get on, we'll really, we'll really get it going. We'll really get it going, and. Thank y'all for tuning in, man. It's, it's, it's going to be a good season. August is almost approaching, so you know things are about to start getting ramped up. They're letting fans in, so you know fans are going to have more videos and things like that. So it's all going to start coming out. Uh, and I can't wait. I can't wait till we start getting some of these 101s like last year. Remember those 101s with Olave, Michael Thomas, all those guys. I can't wait for all those videos to, to start coming out. But it's going to be a treat. It's going to be a treat. Got a good season coming up. Got a lot of content coming. Uh, even on the LSU side, Pelican side, that's going to start coming. But it's training camp season right now. We locked in on the sinks. We are locked in on the Saints right now. Uh, and, hey, thank you all for tuning in once again. It's always just the Boot Tragedies. And I'm out.